Kira Kotu, welcome. Thank you for joining us for Webinar 5 in a series of six webinars designed to support entrance in Samsung's Solve for Tomorrow competition. I'm Julie Baker, the Head of Education at Auckland's MOTAT, one of the judges for the competition, and joining me is Sarah Washbrook from TENS Technology Education New Zealand, who is also a judge at the competition. Sarah is going to lead us in a karakia. Māori ora ki a mātou, arahi na mātou, i a mātou mahi, ki mihia he huarahi mō te kūpapa o te mātauranga hangarau. A fina atu, a fina mai. Te po e here ne i a mātou, huie taiki. taiki. The whakatauki for today's webinar, i manako te kura i kore ai. Crayfish are scarce when they are expected. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Speaking to the idea that even though the end of the project is in sight, you need to maintain focus and energy until you have seen it through to its conclusion. The structure of today's webinar will follow the same structure as previous webinars. We'll talk about the topic for today and provide some content on that. We will direct you to deeper resources available on that particular topic. We'll then look at the assessment rubric for the junior category, year seven, uh, seven to 10, and we'll then go to the assessment rubric for the senior category, years 11 plus. So firstly, a quick uh, reiteration of the design thinking process and where you're at in that. Uh, previous webinars have covered the content around empathising, defining, ideating and prototyping. For this particular webinar we're focusing in on the testing and the implementing stage towards the end of the design thinking process. Just reiterating, design thinking process is not linear, it is iterative, you will be circling back and moving forward and circling back throughout your process. A recap of the um, development of the idea of work that you have been doing, the way that you have moved from a concept which is very much a, a graphical representation of your ideas and lots of possibilities and lots of um, annotations and lots of uh, potential that maybe you have moved away from throughout your process. You might have developed some models along the way once you've settled in or focused in on one of your ideas, you've modelled it to create a bit of a non-working representation of what, how your solution might work. And then you've moved through to more of a prototyping stage, which is a working representation. It's where you've got something that's realistic and is functioning, and you're testing its fitness for purpose. You're testing it with your stakeholders to see if it's actually got flaws or whether there are problems that you need to solve before you move into your final outcome production. Sure. And then you move past your prototype to the final outcome. A final outcome is a fully realised product made using suitable materials and appropriate techniques. And we've used an example here from Mount Richmond Special School Project, Kitchen Tools Reimagined 2022. So they have moved from um, their 3D printed uh, models that they created uh, they then moved on to a, a prototype which was not made out of their final materials and that there were still some modifications that they needed to make to make it really fit for purpose. And then they arrived at this solution. And you can see it's beautifully crafted. It's made out of New Zealand native timbers. It is functioning. It is the right scale. Um, it is designed to be given to stakeholders so they can do some testing and evaluation of this outcome. They've identified the features. Um, you can see that they've got there an angled slot, we've got a vertical slot holding the knife tip secure. It's an ergonomic handle, so they went out to um, ergonomic experts and they designed a handle that is designed to be used by um, people with uh, disabilities that was ergonomic. Uh, the line on the board indicates where the, to place the food item, the surface is easy to clean. And they've also done a little bit of an added bonus for us and they've identified further modifications that they're going to make and it's based on the feedback they've got from their users. So we straight away as judges know that this got taken out to a group of stakeholders and they used it and they came back and they told us what could be improved. It's really important throughout your process that you record the stages of making. Um, we are only able to allocate marks for things that are, you provide evidence of and if you don't have evidence in your presentation to us, we can't give you a mark for it. So please, 
if you're ever in doubt as to whether something should be included in your presentation, just put it in there. It can be as simple as just a, a line in a logbook or a, a voiceover item saying, we've tested with stakeholders, so it might be a critical piece of evidence for us to be able to allocate marks for that work that you've undertaken. So here's an example of um, one way that you might record the stages of making. This is a very uh, sorry, graphical way doesn't have to be done this way, it could be simply a voiceover that you're talking us through your process. It could be a series of PowerPoint slides showing uh, stages of the uh, process that you have gone through. Whatever method you choose, just please provide us with that evidence. Moving on to how we're going to allocate the marks for this particular part of the, um, the work that you're doing. Your final outcome is your the product. And where that comes and fits into in the marking rubric is in the feasibility criteria. 30% of the overall mark. And in particular for this one, we're going to be looking to see that it can be fully implemented with current technologies and resources. So we're looking at your outcome, say that knife that Mark Richard Special School um, had produced, and we're, we're making a judgment, looking at evidence to see that it could be fully implemented existing technologies at this point in time. We're also looking to see that your solution has been improved via repeated testing and iteration. This is one that comes up all the time. So we're just looking for the evidence that you have you've gone backwards and forwards with your stakeholders and with your testing groups and you have done some improvements in your process. You haven't just identified, I'm making this, here it is, done. There are a variety of resources available on the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow website. The particular PowerPoint which is aligned with this webinar topic is the Producing and Trialing a Prototype webinar. So if we explore the senior category for IES 11 to 13 and we're looking at the creation of a final outcome, we are obviously going to be going a little bit more in depth when it comes to the manufacture and the making of the outcome. So we've just focused on some of the keywords that actually come from learning using in technology curriculum. And this will help you to understand um, what we're looking for, what evidence we would like to see actually through that process. So we'd like to see how you've made your design um, and you can reference some of these different terminologies should you wish to. So we are looking for things like have the materials been formed? So have you brought two or more materials together to formulate a new material maybe? And this could really link to a lot of scientific process work or experimentation work should you wish to um, in the development of your idea. So examples of this could be is if you're doing something in food technology is for example um, making dough um, so you're combining different ingredients to make a brand new ingredient that you're going to work with for your outcome another one is more advanced processes um, in materials technology so um, yeah because you are obviously working at a higher level um, you may have more advanced um, skills and techniques to actually show off with the making of your outcome so fiberglass work could be an example here where you're combining different materials and you're making a brand new material with glass reinforced um, plastic there. You can also manipulate your materials. And so this is where you're working with what you have currently existing um, and you're changing them in ways where it doesn't change their actual structural properties. Um, so for example, you could be sawing something, a piece of wood. Um, you could be cutting, bending, joining, gluing, those different types of aspects. They're manipulating the materials to make an outcome. The next one is transformation. So you may take an existing material and you may change a few of its properties, but essentially it's the same material. It's not a brand new material. So here you're thinking, if you're looking in, say, something like soft materials, it could be um, using wool and felting. It could be if you're going into food aspects and things like beetle and egg white. So it's still an egg white, but obviously it's just been beaten and whisked up. So you're adding air to it and it changes some of its little properties. Uh, or it could be something like steam bending timber. Yeah, so you're adding water to the timber and heat, and obviously that's enabling it to actually bend and form into different shapes. So once again, more advanced techniques and processes. 
You also may use a combination. And when we're looking at combined technologies, we're actually looking at across the technology areas. And we've had some great projects in the past where they haven't just focused in one particular material area. Um, they may have used um, electronics combined with hard materials, or they may have gone into digital technologies and computer programming and combine that with some material selection of some sort. So if you can combine the different processes and techniques from different technological areas and scientific areas, then obviously you're showing some more advanced skills and your thinking is a little bit more innovative and creative as well with the techniques and processes that you're selecting. So the key question for this part of the rubric and scoring is, can it be implemented with current technology and resources? So you really need to provide evidence of the following things for us. So we're looking at how the product has been made. Um, you may have done some planning for your actual um, making of the outcome itself um, and you've highlighted what we call key stages the key um, sections and the key time points where you're going to make certain parts of the outcome by you can use those key stages and you can refer back to them are you on time um, what problems have you come across till now have you had to change the idea in any way so you're actually highlighting the iterative process that you've been working through even whilst you are making the final technological outcome obviously we would love to see evidence of your final outcome this could be with photographs a great way those video because then we can actually see it working and in action um, so making sure that yeah you, you're not just saying we have made this we would actually love to see it because then we can see the materials and the processes that you've gone through to actually construct the final outcome itself like we've mentioned before ex examples and evidence of maybe more advanced techniques and skills in the processes for making and consideration of the materials or components that you have chosen so what materials have you chosen or what ingredients or what components if you're looking at electronics for example and why have you chosen them now at this higher level we have to put content uh, we have to think about thinking in its broadest sense, so design and making in its broadest sense. So you may have some consideration in there with sustainable practices, for example. So um, what is the impact you are having on the environment during the making of this outcome? Yeah, how can you help our environment through the making of the outcome too? Those kinds of considerations you can think about and maybe put forward in your um, evidence too. And the other area that you may want to weave in is a consider consideration of Marta Ava Māori and Tikana. So have you considered the impact of you creating this outcome and the processes you go through and is it responsive to the needs and the values of everybody who you are working with. Let's have a look at some um, examples of creating the final outcome in some previous projects for the competition. Um, we'll have a look at the example up there in the top left hand of the slide, which was from Howick College, looking at non-invasive diabetes device, which was from 2022. These students, as you can see here, have clearly identified the materials and components that they are going to use to create their technological outcome. Not only have they identified the components, they've provided a description and given us suggestions as to why they have selected those to be used in their final outcome. Another example that we have over on the right is um, Brooklyn Journal's Brooklyn's Nighttime Hero from 2021. This is the final outcome that he made. And you can see not only has he created it and shown evidence of that final outcome in there, um, you can actually see that he's actually tested it back and gone back to that design brief to make sure that it is actually fit for purpose. So during this, and this will actually help with the next stage as well, which is looking at testing and trialing and evaluating, you can see that he's actually thinking about about the use of the product and has it been successful. The image that you can see at the bottom comes from Cameron Moore's project, which is the Humane Trap for Wallabies from 2023. And this was a really great example of combining different skills and techniques from across technological areas. It was also a great example of using innovative ideas for a very authentic context. 
So this is the humane trap um, for wallabies he created. And you can see the trap there is using different kinds of materials. He considered the material properties um, and how he was actually going to fix and attach this to the tree and explained that in the video that he submitted for evidence. Not only that, but it also is controlled um, using Arduino-based programming. So um, there is a mixture of digital technologies with hard materials combining together to make a fully functioning working um, outcome. So if we have a look at the senior category score sheet for the Sulphur Tomorrow competition, we are looking at the final prototype category. This is obviously the fully final functioning working outcome, the final product. It is worth 20% of the marks. So you see that it's quite substantial when we're looking at the allocation of the marking for this rubric. What we are looking for as judges is substantial evidence of either manipulation, transformation, combination, and or formation of materials and components for the creation of the outcome. We would like to see your final finished working outcome. If you would like to access these slides, um, you can head to the bit.ly that we have on here, or you can scan the QR code. This will give you access to the slides to be able to use in your classroom, should you wish. All of our webinars are recorded and they are hosted on the Samsung Sulphur Tomorrow website and the TENS YouTube channel. So if you want to have a look at any of the other webinars that we have in the series, please head to that space. And we will finish this webinar today with our final karaki. Ki amato katoa, kuamutu mato yamato mahi yamato kupakafuki. Arahi namato ki akoe mato yamato he papa ki afakatapua mato ki na kupapa me na mea e fakapono menakatia mai mato kiora. <laughs>